<laughs> it's just really bad. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to this one. In this episode, we're going to tackle the hood that was always really, really horrible, and we're gonna get to the bottom of all the dents and all the stuff that needs to be done in preparation to painting the entire car and nonetheless the hood. So let's go. But now, it's just basically finishing works, um, getting this thing done, and yeah, then I have to talk to my demons um, if I want to do this, weld all these spots, I think I will, uh, yeah, but that is a lot of work to correct whatever was done to it because it's yeah it's just really bad <laughs> but getting there so grinding down to bare metal and welding it shut because why not So now having dug my way down to metal on all these holes, I'm gonna weld them up and I'm gonna leave the piece or I'm gonna weld it up and grind it down to be level. Then I'm probably gonna leave it till tomorrow so that the heat will dissipate and it's not gonna do anything funny so that everything is the same temperature when we glue the bonded skin back to the support. But this is going to take some time and some work to get even because of the amount of body filler that is on here. So I'm not not really happy about that. Not at all. This hood needs to be glued together with the frame. That has been the issue from day one. Um, a couple of things. It's really soft on one corner. Um, and I don't know how much heat I can apply to it when there's still a lot of paint on the back side. But I think I'm gonna give it a go anyway, um, just to de-stress it before we apply the glue. Normally, the glue is like these guys. I don't know if you can see it. It's um, it's a foam of sorts. It is highly flexible. And that normally sits underneath the frame and bonds the hood together. So it can move um, without being stressed and without if you just use some something that will harden up, um, like two component epoxies and resins and stuff like that, you will have actual dents where uh, your spots of glue are, 
you will see it on the other side of the hood. So you need something that is um, softer than that. You need something that will still bond and hold it. Um, preferably this stuff. But this is really hard to come by, um, apparently. Especially where I am, so I'm going to do something else. Which is going to be just as good. But first, we're going to see if we can get this dent straighten a little bit out. So now I'm going to flip the hood and apply some heat to see what that does to it. You just saw the hood bounce back and now it is just as good as it was before. Here there is some tension on it, here there is still a low, a low spot because of this dent. So let's try applying some heat across it as we also need this to come up and this will allow it um, even if it's just for now then when I apply the glue and flip it and it hardens or dries up a bit um, the hood is gonna sit right so that's gonna help support all this stuff you can actually see where one of the uh, old glue lines were underneath that runs right here because they just glued or filled in the entire frame um, it still let go though so it didn't work but that is what you get you get a really uneven hood Already just applying a little heat. You see this is now very, it doesn't flex. So we need a little more here. Um, I think we're gonna apply it to the area around it. And then we need a little more on this piece. But this just gives the hood back its shape. Except for this, where the old strut uh, or frame underneath were glued. It has been pulling on that because of the indentation that was there. So we'll have this fold and that is something that we need to address. Now it cools off and then it gets a little bit squirmish. But remember this is not going to be like 100% set. Uh, set. This is still, as of now, because this is just one sheet of metal that isn't supported, um, it's still going to move. But this is better, and we can work with it. Now I can see this has two dents um, that I need to address. One right here, and the other one right here. So let's try to see if we can Otherwise, it just seems like the same. It's gonna, it's gonna be good when we glue it onto the, uh, the frame. But this we need to address. Already now, I feel the temperature has gone out of it, and it still retains the shape. So it's basically down to a little soft up here. But it is a little. Oh yeah, I think we could do with a little heat up here. I'm gonna do that first, so it, everything is as close to where we can get it, then we start beat on it. Otherwise we're gonna get a shape that we don't want and that we can correct afterwards. This is basically here. And I find that there's like, there probably is some exact science to this. I've done this a few times on water panels and roofs, mostly on drift cars that we don't really care about. Being gentle with the heat is the key. I'll 
as soon as you heat it up, it just goes right back to where it's supposed to be. And the trick is to keep it there once it gets cold. It's funny because now this side is on tension and this side is not. So now this starts to give. Remember we want everything in the position that we can work with. And often it's not about applying heat directly to the indentation. It's a lot of the times it's also the surrounding metal. I can't wait to put Bondo on this and block sand it. It is gonna suck so hard. As much as the rest of the car has been like a wheel of pain, this this is just me being really stubborn. I can just go out and get a new boot, possibly. But uh, I really want to try and save this. I haven't done this, like I said, many times. So every time there's a chance to learn, while you do something like this, grab it man, if you could just throw out the hood if it goes wrong, cool, I'll do that. But if I can learn from this, I will, I'll try. I would really like it to pop up by itself. Because then it found it's like where it should be. But so far this just keeps on diving. And that is bad. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so all the tension was just focused downward. Yeah, that's it. It's firm. One big dent here, one big dent here. And of course this side is now colder, so this is stretched a little. Let's just hope we can get it. So now I'm gonna see if I can fix these two dents. Fix them, I'm just gonna tab them lightly to get this done while everything is hot. See if it sits back in position. causing some ugly dents. We'll square them off later. Right now we just need this to stop acting up. And now from before where we had the upward um, bulge where the frame was, we now have a downward uh, indentation. This is also for the hood from the hood being really hot. So now I've stretched this not really did a great job, so now I'm just going to try to see if you can just flatten some of these tips. And then we'll let it cool off and have a look. Alright, now this has had the time to cool all the way off and it has settled. Um, this side of the hood is perfect. Of course, it's not glued on the um, on the frame, so it will ha it will have a little give. It's meant to. It's just a sheet of metal. The other side, where we applied heat and stretched the metal ever slightly upward, is a lot better than it was. But it still has this point where I feel like there's not enough metal. Um, 
it's in this spot here. So we might have to stretch it a little to keep it from doing this. Also, when I have my hand underneath on the frame, and then um, I can both feel at the same time. I can feel the frame and the uh, the skin of the hood. I can feel it moving. Um, so if I just press up and try to fixate it, it's actually a lot better. It's still a little soft, but I think it's within what's reasonable. But I just feel like right here there is an indentation still. Also all the high spots that we made will have to be pounded down, but I think we will do that after it's glued. I just feel like I want to give this, stretch this a little further, and I feel if I do that, the entire hood is just going to be a lot more stable up to this point, and still a little soft back here. I don't know why, but again, if I apply pressure from the back side, It just sits like it's supposed to. So I don't want to do too much to it. But this is a very, this is a low spot that we need to address. And there's going to be a lot of high spots from beating up and stretching the metal. But I'm still not comfortable with this. Because this moving and flexing so much it's just too much. So now we're going to take this piece here first, stretch it, and then see what it does. Because right now we have it pretty much where we want it, up to this point. So this piece right here, and this is not metal working hammers. This is just me using what I have in my shop. Um, I wish at some point that I could learn this craft. Um, I have a rough idea of what I'm doing and sometimes when it's a trash hood like this it's better to just try something and try and learn than it is to just bin it and buy a new one and never know. So It kind of makes sense to me what I'm doing sometimes. Let me try and take it from there. And just by stretching it just a little, it already gets a lot stiffer. Now onto this. Now the hood is actually pretty stable. It doesn't want to flex. And this is exactly how I want it before we glue it down because when we glue it down it's going to hold it a lot better and it's going to allow me to take all these spots where I just um, maneuvered it into place and beat them back down without it distorting whatever too much. This is now pretty good. I think I have nothing to compare it with because I'm not a metal guy. Just the music. Yeah, sweet. Weird. Didn't know I could do that.
the hood is prepped. I just ran some tape lines on here, um, just about a quarter of an inch um, out from the frame on the skin, so that when you apply the blobs of glue or whatever you're going to use, this is some body sealer um, which stays flexible. That's very important. You can't use silicone products because if you use silicone products, it's just going to mess up your entire paint process afterwards. Um, also, in my experience, they don't bond that well when you run it through a lot of heat cycles. This is body, um, yeah, some some body adhesive uh, for panels, and this will stay flexible. So now it's just a matter of deciding where you want to put the the blobs and glue it back onto the frame. I have no idea how this was done originally because everything was taken out. So I guess I am going to be starting from the center working my way out. And just starting off at the center I work my way out so that the pressure is... I don't know if this is going to do any difference but in my head it does, it's kind of like torquing down a head. So start off from the center and move out in spiral pattern. So also, if you're new to my channel, uh, please make sure that you like and subscribe um, to my channel. That helps me make a lot more of these videos and to get a lot more content done. Also, maybe at some point getting a bigger shop and some newer cars to work on. So thank you for watching and let's get back to this. see a lot of people, a lot of people, some people doing restorations when they apply sealer to the body, um, not necessarily the hood, but um, body panels where they glue them together or it's just sealant. Then they develop special brushes and techniques and stuff to do the ends so it looks OEM and add that um, original feeling to it. I just kind of feel that is just dumb because most of that stuff was done because of cost and of time concerns so they didn't have time or you know the money to spend the time to finish it off properly so they just brushed the ends so why not just do it like properly but this is gonna give this authentic feel for those guys I guess <laughs> even though I don't really approve of it and it doesn't really look that good so I think I have to pull off the tape line now before they hardened and then we flip the hood and then let it dry. Alright, <clears throat> this is the next day. The hood had had some time to dry. Um, to dry up these blobs that we put in there. I think this has a dry time of per 24 hours, I think it's 3 millimeters. This gap is about 8 or 9, so this needs about 2 days to like fully set. Um, but most of the other ones should be under 6 millimeters, they should be, be set. So now it's time to do what I've been wanting to do for some time. But you can't, you can't touch the hood while it's drying because if you press down the glue, it's not going to sit right. And right now, especially this side that was just soft, is just completely set like it should be. Like really, really set. Now the only thing is these, I don't think you can see them, but there are small indentations from where I just put the hammer to it and stretch the metal just a bit. But this is just nice. I'm actually pretty stoked about that, especially not 
knowing what the hell I was doing. Um, just having a rough idea of how to do it. So far, this is turning out great. Now, some more dry time and then we can start addressing all these upward indentations. We have to do something about those because I don't want to apply like the thick layer of filler that was on there. As you remember there were 8, 9, 10 millimeters. Um, I have some of the chunks that I saved that fell off and it is just massive. I think they did that in an attempt to try and stabilize the hood because it was really flexible uh, due to this dent that was in this area and right now there's just nothing it is just taut and on there what a relief a really really a relief because finding a hood from a 71 Celica here in Denmark is close to impossible without buying a car a complete car for parts and they are price-wise getting up there so let's not let's not do that